Today I'm going to show you how I ended up designing my own Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 face using my own illustration and a bit of animation. You might have been brought to this channel by my phone customization video, so you can guess by now I like to add my own artistic flair to my tech. I've had this watch for over a year now and I wanted to see what I could do with it since I wasn't the biggest fan of the watch faces already available in the watch store. I discovered that it's surprisingly easy to make my own watch face with Samsung's own watch face studio and entirely free program. So let's get on into the video. I started off in Photoshop with a canvas of the size 1000 by 1000 pixels. The actual watch face itself would be around 450 by 450 pixels, so that gave me a lot of space to be able to scale down the illustration and perhaps move stuff around if I wanted to later on. I'd say always go big with the canvases you're doing in whatever design program you're using, because you never want to lose out on detail if you've done something that's a bit too small. It's always better to scale down than try and scale up. I didn't really have an exact design in mind, I just knew I wanted to use sort of the shape and the design of a Japanese konobori, um, like the, sort of the fish and I really like the idea of animating it to very slightly kind of blow in the wind. I knew that despite having this quite eye-catching detail I still wanted everything else to be quite minimalist so it was just the illustration and the time and that was it. I wasn't too fussed about all the sort of other components you can add to a Samsung watch face like steps or battery life. No, I just wanted a little bit of animated illustration and being able to tell the time and the date and I was all happy with that. In terms of the colour palette, I definitely knew I wanted to include some of the pink that is on the watch colour itself to keep everything very coherent and in general I wanted it to be quite neutral in terms of not too contrasting heavy colours so I definitely wanted to have orange and also a bit of purple just to kind of not have everything too washed and monotone. Based on some tutorial videos I watched of how Samsung Watch Face Studio works, I thought it would be cool to use clouds to be able to coincide with the seconds and sort of turn um, on an axis and kind of rotate with the time. Just like another little detail that was fairly muted but still there. I took a while deciding where exactly I wanted the time to go. I thought it would work in the centre or just below the fish but everything kind of seemed a bit unbalanced so I decided in the end I wanted to put it to the right and almost have the shape of the fish and the ribbon kind of direct your eyes towards the time so even though it's not the centre of the face it's still present because of how the illustration moves you, your eyes towards it. And this is the final result. So I actually split up the fish and the clouds and the background all into separate layers so that I could animate the fish separately. And then when it comes to bringing all the parts into Samsung Watch Studio, it gives me the flexibility to be able to scale things independently and move them around to how I want them to be placed. My animation skills are pretty shocking. But based on the idea I had in mind for very subtle sort of fish tail movement, it meant that my skills were just enough to hopefully make it look alright. This isn't an animation tutorial, but this is the basic way of how I managed to animate the images. As they're static images, I basically had to try and rig the image with these anchor points, and then with those anchor points I could actually warp each individual fish and add keyframes to be able to animate them. 
I ended up animating them again and again about like five times because I felt like I just couldn't get it right. Even though the movement was only slight, I felt in some cases it was a bit too stiff and I just was t kept tweaking and tweaking and eventually I sort of had it how I wanted it to be. So here we are to the main event. I'm actually setting up the watch face with watch face studio. I have a little story to tell and basically I started designing the watch with Galaxy Watch Studio which is actually the earlier iteration I'm guessing of this program and I only realized to the point when I was trying to connect my watch to the program and it didn't work that I realized oh it's it's not compatible with watch 4 so I spent a good few hours working on my design until I realized. So if you have a Galaxy Watch 3 or I guess an earlier version then you need to use Galaxy Watch Studio but if you're like me and you have a Galaxy Watch 4 you need to use Watch Face Studio. So just so you know so you're not caught out and spending hours and hours doing your design only to realize you can't actually use it. I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can download the program. It's currently just available for Windows users as they're experiencing problems with macOS. I don't know if this part is necessary tutorial, but I'll give you an overview of the things that I did in this program. And if you do actually want a bit more detail, I can potentially do another face and give a full step-by-step -step breakdown. Here this plus button is where you can basically add everything you need. Currently I'm adding in all those components that I made in Photoshop, so the pole with the ribbon and then after that I can import my animation as well that I'd rendered out of After Effects. My animation is a PNG image sequence so I can have transparency and I think it was around 60 frames long in total my animation because I wasn't actually sure how many frames the Samsung Watch Studio would allow for so I wanted to keep it fairly safe. My animation itself isn't too complex anyway, so I didn't need a lot of frames. This program consists of a layer type structure, so quite similar to Photoshop in that you can move layers around and it's got a visual hierarchy. Next I add the time as a layer. In case you don't like the fonts available, you can also add your own. I think you can add any font you want as long as there's no special characters or you don't have enough digits to show the watch time. You can update the expression in the time layer by double clicking so that you can decide how your time is shown. In my case I have two layers where the first layer is the hour and the second layer are the minutes. This is because I wanted to have that stacked format, wasn't able to really separate out the two components without having separate layers. Like the time layers, you can also add a date layer and then adjust the expression so you can determine how you want the date to be shown. So here I'm adding in the clouds layer. I'm importing the image actually as a second hand so that I can add the animation so that the clouds move as the second hand goes clockwise. As you can see, the image is really long and that's because the pivot point is in the center where the seconds will do their rotation clockwise as if this was actually a clock hand. I want a fairly wide turn on the clouds rotation so that's why I had to make the image longer so that it takes longer for the clouds to do their full 360 turn. As you can see, there's also this other tab here, which is called Always On. This is basically what the watch face is displaying when it's always showing. So when I've tried to run the device, it's actually given me a warning that says OPR is too high, which stands for current on pixel ratio. And that on pixel ratio is how many pixels are displayed when always on mode is on. 
and you can only have it no more than 15% because otherwise it's considered a battery drain as it's showing the watch face constantly and it's constantly got to be displaying those pixels. In this case, I've actually hidden all the components except for the time and the date display because that just brings it below 15%. The normal tab is what it looks like when you press the buttons and you want to display the watch face, so all is good. So now what you need to do to connect your watch to the program is go to settings and then scroll down until you see about watch. On about watch you then go to software and software version and you keep tapping it until you see developer mode turned on. Go back to the settings and then you should see the developer options. If you scroll down you should see ADB debugging and turn it on and then turn on debug over Wi-Fi. So back in settings you need to make sure that your watch is connected to Wi-Fi. Once your Wi-Fi is connected you click on it and then you should see the IP address which is what you're going to need to connect your program to the watch. As long as your watch's Wi-Fi and your PC's Wi-Fi are on the same network, if you run on device and then press scan devices, your watch should come up. If it doesn't, that's where you can press the plus button and add the IP address in as well. It'll run for some time and then suddenly you'll see it on your watch and it's great. I actually ended up going back and tweaking things such as the font and also the placement of things because I realised once it was on the watch face it kind of fit a bit differently so I wanted to make sure stuff wasn't squished and I was happy with the composition. I also used the preview to be able to see how it would look in real time without having to wait for the watch to build. And there you have it, this is my custom watch face and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments what you think and if you do your own I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.